Hi, I'm Mike, and when I first started using Godot, a lot of my scenes looked very flat and dull, and it took me a while to figure out why. So I wanted to make this video to let you know uh, a quick and easy way to start to solve that problem, and pretty much just go over why you want to use a world environment node and a directional light. So let's hop into Godot, and I'll show you a whole bunch of options uh, that these node gives you, uh, so you can start to make your scenes look more visually appealing. So here we are in Godot. Uh, I've gotten a head start and made a set of reference spheres using the built-in spatial material so you can get a sense of how things look as we progress. I've also preset a camera that I'm just going to add to the scene here so we can get a consistent view as I start messing around with the environment node. So as you can see, things look normal, they're fine, but not spectacular. So let's change that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over and add a new world environment node to the scene. Generally, I like to keep it at the top of the scene, so that way it's easy to reference if I ever need to make tweaks to it. Now, this node is pretty simple. Uh, there's really only two things that you can do. You can add an environment resource and you can add a camera attributes resource. We're actually going to be focusing on the environment resource in this video, but before we get into that, I do want to mention that the camera attributes here is something that will affect all the cameras in the scene, including the one that the editor uses to render as you are setting up the scene and, you know, editing it. You can make changes here, but there's also space on each of the cameras to add a camera attribute. So it's per camera instance, not for all of the cameras in the scene. But there's the option to set them all to a default one if that's what you choose to do. Moving on to the environment node, uh, and there's a ton of options here that we can play with, and I'll be going through a whole bunch of them so you can kind of get a sense for what they do. But I'm jumping ahead, and let's start with the basics to have the most drastic improvement most quickly. And that is, we're going to create a new sky. For this first one, I'll show you basically how to recreate the default look, uh, and we're going to set it to the procedural sky. And now we have all of these options down here that we can use to customize it. So from the sky color to the color on the horizon. You can even add a cloud layer, which if you don't need it to be animated and fancy, you can just add here a fast noise, which again is another built-in option in Godot. And you can already see it just makes it look a lot more visually interesting than just the blue gradients in the sky. Now, if we add a directional light to the scene, um, we get this cool benefit where it actually places the sun um, so that it makes sense for the direction that the directional light is pointing. So if I rotate it around, you can see the sun moving around the, in the sky. So uh, moving on from this, there's the physical sky. Now the benefit of this skybox is that it uses some more math to kind of calculate how the atmosphere would diffuse the light coming from a star, for example. But you still have the same customization options that you did previously, such as adjusting the color of the sky and adjusting the color of the ground. Now the benefit of this sky is that you can still rotate the directional light to move the sun through the sky. And when the sun dips below the horizon, the sky goes dark. So it's a pretty easy way to like get a good start on a day-night cycle, uh, especially just for testing. The downside here is there's no cover layer, so a quick cloud layer using a fast noise is not something that we can do uh, in this instance, but the day-night cycle is certainly uh, a reason to choose this sky. Finally, we have the panorama sky option, where we can take a panoramic image and it will use that as the skybox uh, and as some basic lighting information. Now the limitations of this are that the sun is generally already in a specific point in the sky, so you have to align the directional light to that. Uh, one quick trick is that if you have a reflected object, you can line up the specular uh, from the directional light with the sun that's already in the sky. So moving on from the sky options, let's move on to the next one here, which is ambient light. By default, it will try to emulate the color of the sky and add that to basically brighten the shadows created by the directional light to simulate the amount of light that would be continuing to bounce between all of the objects in the scene before reaching your eyes. 
uh, reflected light, uh, you have the option of choosing what the reflections uh, reflect, uh, either the sky or the background color. Uh, tone map is an interesting one. It's essentially how you want the game engine to interpret different lighting values. Uh, linear is the default, but I do tend to prefer the look of uh, the filmic set setting or aces, uh, just because it gives you that greater contrast right out of the box, which I find just usually looks better in most situations. But whichever one you choose, you do have some sliders you can play around with here to really tweak it to uh, your liking. And there's further settings down below that you can refine things even further. SSR stands for Screen Space Reflections, which currently I have it disabled because I have a reflection probe that I've already added to the, as a child of the um, metallic sphere, uh, and that's how I'm getting the reflections on that. Uh, SSAO uh, stands for Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, and this is, are the shadows that show up in corners of rooms. So if you look at the corners of your rooms, you'll notice, unless you have a light pointed directly there, that they tend to be a little bit darker than um, just the flat wall. And that's what this simulates based on the screen space. Uh, I, this is definitely a better idea to bake this in as a ambient occlusion map on your materials themselves instead of calculating it at runtime. Uh, SSIL is Screen Space Indirect Lighting, which is intended to be used in combination with the next option, or something like the Voxel Global Illumination Node, which is a lighting thing, uh, and we'll do a full video to cover specific lighting things later on. Uh, just know that this is an option for you if that's something that you're currently using in your scene. SD, G, goodness, that's a lot of letters. SDFGI, which stands for uh, Signed Distance Field Global Illumination. This is a, a neat new addition that came with the upgrade to Godot 4 and the Vulkan renderer. It's a very good way of simulating global illumination without doing ray tracing, but it still is relatively demanding in terms of processing power and graphics uh, specifically. So you definitely have to choose whether or not you want to use it or if there's a better lighting solution for your project. Uh, glow, as it says, is just how much of a glow objects have, or how much of a halo objects have um, from light reflecting off of them. Um, this is much more of an atmospheric thing, so aesthetically, take your pick how you want it to look. Fog, I think, is the one option in this area that works in all rendering modes, but if you're using the forward plus rendering mode, you're probably going to want to use the next option, which is volumetric fog because it accomplishes a similar goal to the fog option, but you have more control and it looks a little bit more realistic. But, you know, pick whichever one works best for your game. And the final option here is adjustments. And this is, if you've ever used any kind of photo editing application on your phone or like Photoshop, these are just the basic standard or uh, options that you get. So brightness, contrast, and saturation. Um, and these are just the final layers that you'll probably want to tweak to get the exact look you want. And that's it for a quick overview of the environment resource in Godot 4. Now if you forget what any of these letters mean, you can just hover your cursor over the uh, enabled text and it'll give you a brief uh, summary of what the option does. Uh, pretty much what I just uh, covered in my video, so you don't have to watch the, this entire thing over again. I mean, you can if you really want to help me boost my metrics, but don't do that, just be efficient with your time. But one thing that you can do to help is hitting the like button to uh, let me know that this video was useful to you and help it to reach a wider audience. Uh, you might also be interested in a video that I made about how to make a toon style or cell shaded look using the built-in spatial material, which I'll link to you to here. Uh, but that's it for me for now. Uh, good luck with your projects and take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time.